Nigerian students have threatened to ground activities at airports across the country in protest at a strike by university lecturers. Is this move feasible and will it yield any result? Also on the breakfast, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has been sued for allegedly failing to give over 7 million Nigerians adequate time to complete their voter registration. We'll discuss this and what lies ahead for both parties in the case. And as usual, we have a depth analysis of some of today's newspaper headlines. We call it of the press. A very good morning to you. We're back with the breakfast of Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Monday morning. We're reaching live from our studios right here in the heart of Victoria La Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartel. And I am Messi Ebopo. Beautiful morning and thanks for joining us. Indeed. Mercy, is, uh, it's been a flurry of activities over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, and we're here to begin with the action packed trending segment and an um, action packed trending story. Um, <laughs> Nigerians reacting to the viral picture of the All Progressives Congress uh, presidential candidate uh, Shiwa Jibola Metinubu over the weekend. Uh, it, what appeared to be uh, Shiwa Jibola Metinubu uh, sleeping or dozing off during a meeting with the mayor of Gombe, Abubakar, Shehu Abubakar. Uh, this meeting was on Saturday and uh, this picture spread like wildfire on the internet especially Twitter. Now, if you recall, the former Lagos State Governor paid a courtesy visit to the uh, Emir's Palace after attending the wedding of uh, Ms. Bahu Inuayaya, who is the son of Governor Muhammadu Inuayaya, uh, was spotted dozing off in a picture while Senator Ahmed Lound, the Senate President, was speaking in the palace. This video got several reactions, you know, Nigerians talking about this. Tinubu is a, a, a presidential candidate. No surprises that he's getting a lot of attention. Um, some issues regarding his fitness in terms of his age and stoutness health-wise for the office. And this was, of course, fodder for his uh, opponents and supporters of his opponents uh, to say, hey, this man is not ready to be president. The video got several reactions from Nigerians, as most of them, you know, believe that this action proves that he is not fiscally fit uh, to be president. You know, some said, you know, one, one Twitter user put out a tweet saying, here, nature is calling to the way if you're owing him, go and pay. Don't pay with my future and that of my kids. Because all sorts of comments. But some rose to his defense, you know, sharing pictures of uh, Ashwaji Bola Metin, of, of his opponents, uh, Peter Gregory, be presidential candidate of the Labour Party, s seemingly sleeping uh, at one event where you had the likes of Ifan Yuba uh, alongside him. Um, and Ifan, I think, Araurome is his name. Another picture I saw was that of uh, Atiku Abuka, a presidential candidate of the uh, People's Democratic Party, who seemed to be sleeping at some campaign event somewhere uh, in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A lot of bats flying left, right, and center over the weekend. Mercy. Well, I actually saw that. And, uh, you know, looking at uh, the rundown for the show. Oh, it showed uh, on the screen, even the other pictures. <laughs> I mean, looking at the pictures of those who are sleeping. So you on the screen, you can see uh, that's uh, Atiku Abubakar. I don't know at what point he was sleeping. That's also uh, another presidential candidate. He's also a presidential candidate, former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, former governor of Anambra State, and also presidential candidate of the Labour Party. And as well as... Uh, you know, the flag bearer of the APC. You also have Wiki <laughs> on that screen sleeping. But moving away from that, you also want to look through. You would see that world leaders, I mean, the, there's a list of world leaders. We've actually seen a couple of persons who've been sleeping uh, over time. Not, not necessarily an excuse or trying to hold brief, but I don't think that this is actually new, you know, with those who actually hold power. For instance, uh, if you remember sometime, uh, you know, in I, I can't remember the exact year, but Chen Jinping once upon a time visited the United Kingdom, and you know he was found snoozing and you know sleeping at the time. He was caught actually, but I'm sure that those who are members of his constituency of his region and country probably would have reacted. And so we have seen pictures, you know, from 
uh, very powerful and prominent persons who slept, including the Pope at some point also slept. I mean, so for me, I don't think that this is actually new and, uh, you know, this should actually mean anything. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader uh, fell asleep during Barack Obama's State of the Union speech in 2015. It wasn't her first time, according to her report. But the reason, because that's my question, why do people really sleep? Why do you have a lot of persons, what a prominent or common people sleep during public events? It was that for her, according to Supreme Court just, uh, Justice Ruth Bader at the time, she said the reason was I, was, I, I wasn't 100% sober. Uh, she blamed the fellow, uh, her fellow Justice Attorney Kennedy for bringing a bottle of red wine uh, to their pre-speech dinner. And in some cases, you probably say that uh, it could be that you're not sober because of activities prior to that time or activities at that time. You can see in, a picture in, in different Robert, cases. Robert Mugabe, now, uh, in, in, in another case, you would also want to say, of course, I mean, there are different pictures. You also want to say that. Uh, uh, people are overworked. Once upon a time, I had a prominent person saying that tired people rule the world, and that's what it is. So I, I, I really don't think, but not to hold brief, but I understand where Nigerians are coming from. Uh, the fact that there's a lot of responsibility. When you become a public figure, especially when you vie for the position of the president, and what have you, I mean, that's a serious office. There's a lot of expectation on you. People want you to be your best, 100%. <laughs> not to say, I mean, it could be anything. Let's not forget that he attended the wedding, you know, of Yahya Bello's son. And afterwards, it was reported that he needed to just pay a courtesy visit because he was in the city. You know, visit the army and what have you. It, it's possible that he was tired. Or maybe there were activities prior to, you know, that particular time. Not to hold brief for him. I'm just saying that sleeping is, 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 is common. I mean, it's something that we all do. I, I know a lot of persons who sleep in church. As for, you, you are very conversant with that. I'm, I'm sure that those you, you, you people are around. You want to give us some names? <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't categorically right. say. So, but so you that's, know that's what you do in church. That's why you're... No, but you're what I'm saying is this. You, you know, if you, go, if you go to church, <laughs> yeah, well. sometimes, I mean, you see it. Mm. Especially yeah. if you're uh, an usher or protocol officer, yeah. you find yeah. a lot of people yeah. dozing, okay. snoozing okay. at different points. You know, so, it happens. So, so, I mean, I think we can all say, you know, what you never can tell uh why uh, shiwaji was sleeping it's a normal thing when you're tired to fall asleep i mean even i fall asleep you know in the daytime i'm in the vehicle going home <laughs> i'm being driven i'm not sure you don't want to, you, you know don't... i fall asleep in the car you know i'm in the office waiting for you know um some other thing uh i catch a, a brick you know one day i wrote i wrote something online i said you know, <laughs> Lagos would uh, humble you no, no, not humble you. No, Lagos will um, will deal with your sleep. Yeah, you know, it's just it. If you, if you are a back-to-back, -back, you know, non-stop ways kind of person, sometimes you just it just affects you. You don't sleep. You stay awake. You know, and uh, I mean, we never can tell. We never can tell. Um, for the picture that was shared of Peter B, um, some someone shared a counter picture. You know, on Twitter, I saw yesterday of when he was wide awake uh, at that same event, sitting on that same chair, and you know, listening to someone addressing them. You know, so it's it's neither here nor there. We don't know the full picture, the context. But 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 sometimes, Kofi, yeah. you know that uh, so some of these gatherings can be very boring. Uh, I mean, this this is you know, it, it could be sounding like a lullaby, and 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 it would take you to sleep. Well, well, well even, I, I'm just even saying, if it's boring, you, you are a presidential candidate. You no, paid, but, but Kofi, you, you just pay, like you I mentioned, you paid a, a courtesy visit, uh, you know, to a, such a public event. You know, boredom should not be a matter. It should not even come in. This is this is know? me just saying as yeah, one yeah, out yeah, of I so know, many. I know, I know. I'm just saying that you know, if you are a presidential candidate, and uh, my opinion. You know, you attend a public function, you know, boredom doesn't count. You okay, ah, I'm bored, let me sleep. In front of everybody, no. You wouldn't want to do that. So, so it, it might not be the case, but like I rightly mentioned, it could be anything. I mean, we've seen a lot of persons who's, who have slept, very prominent, powerful people, but this is not to make excuse for presidential candidate ahead of the elections uh, 2023 to be sleeping because he sent a lot of message. Not also forgetting that there's a narrative. You also have a narrative where people are saying you are not, um, you, you're not young, right? And so uh, 
you know, age is actually not your friend. And so you, it might just mean yeah, that yeah, your body yeah, cannot you know. actually carry. And that's why you have all of that. That's one narrative. And that's why it was actually a big boss. But to be very honest, I, I know that a lot of people sleep, including the people who are talking and tweeting on yeah, Twitter. Uh, um, so, so people I, I sleep. That's an excuse. But I, like yeah, I said, yeah. uh, when you become as a public figure, and especially for us in Nigeria, we are moving. Our democracy is, you know, is evolving. When you become an aspirant, when you become, you know, you are vying for a different position. Where well, at the time where people are suing government, suing government agents, suing the president, that's you know an era where we're at. And so it would be okay for people to say, why are you sleeping? You know, you can't be sleeping. You can't be sleeping. It means that you'll be sleeping on the job if you become eventually you get the ticket and then you become president. I think that that's what a lot of persons are saying. But we're just also saying that, hey, <laughs> we have also looked at, you know, pictures and stories where a lot of persons are sleeping. Uh, I, was, I was just about to add, you know, um, for those who are, uh, you know, supporters, you know, maybe of Ashiwaji, you know, bringing up the, <laughs> the example of Robert Mugabe may not exactly be a, a, a wise one, may not exactly be smart, because you don't want your candidate to be compared to Robert Mugabe. You know, Mugabe was, was he, went, he almost wanted to die in office. <laughs> and I think when he was, he was removed, within a matter of uh, weeks or months, he, he passed on. May so rest in peace. But um, Mugabe is not exactly the greatest example. All right, but let's move on. Let's move on. But moving away from that, there's also on a top trending that uh, please tag us Peter Obi's supporters in a boring slate. And that's also got, you know, Twitter reacting. When we talk about social media most times, really, Twitter is always at the forefront. Um, and, and that particular situation, very, some people have described it as unfortunate. And however it is, there's been, you know, on the other hand, the fact that Sarah is suing the president, Muhammad Buhari, for the incident that happened. You have supporters. Let's not also forget that you, you have activities of supporters, different supporters, you know, going out to the streets in different states, uh, taking out that rally, saying, hey, we're rallying and supporting a certain candidate. But, you know, it was quite different, as you can see on the screen, the tear gas and what have you. And the question that a lot of persons have been asking, you know, is that do people have a right, you know, to go out? I mean, at what point uh, do you put out the tear gas? Because everyone has a right. I mean, it's just like you're having a protest. It is expected that, you know, that the security agencies, you know, men of the Nigerian police force, among others, would be there to ensure that uh, this actually happens and no one is left out. I mean, everyone is protected. But um, the incident that happened quite unfortunate in, in a boring state, a Barclay case, there's been a lot that's been said about David Umai. And, and we're hoping that, you know, there will be a response because in all of this, I mean, I haven't really seen a response, you know, from uh, the state government. And really, it's quite worrisome. Yeah, well, let's just play, roll a tape. You know, members of the, uh, the uh, obedient movement, movement, as they're called, uh, were gathered at mile 50, you know, to embark on that rally. They want to convert support for their candidate, uh, but were stopped from going to the streets. So we'll listen to and uh, watch some clips and we'll be back. Anybody who organizes any kind of uh, fitness uh, movement or whatsoever in the state today. And so we peacefully we were conducting ourselves and all of a sudden the state, uh, the police started um, shooting tear gas on us, dispersing people. So many persons have been injured. Uh, a lot are in the hospital already, but we are still here as peace-loving people and we are determined to show our solidarity to our candidate, uh, Mr. Peter Obi. So the police officer that came didn't give us any specific reason, but he, I heard him very clearly quoting the governor as saying that uh, no such movement should hold today in Abakaliki and that anybody who tries to do any kind of match in the state today will be ruthlessly dealt with. All right. Um, at the time, you know, uh, the Eboyne State Police was reached that a spokesman for the Eboy State Command of a Nigeria Police Force was reached. There was no immediate comment. I, I would like to believe that uh, there should be some comment today if he already hasn't put one out. Uh, but this is what we see. Uh, I think it was just uh, a matter of time for something to happen because uh, um, this is a situation we find ourselves in the country where people embark on protests, they're stopped. This is not a protest. It was meant to be uh, just a peaceful walk 
um, some call it fitness fitness walk. You know, in fact, they're having more fitness walks on first October. You know, they put out a, a uh, what do you call it? A timetable schedule. I saw it online yesterday. Uh, Obedati or obedient fitness walk. Uh, I do not know if uh, Peter B himself or the Labour Party himself are, you know, organisers of this, but it would seem, it seems that these are individuals organising their own things as a way of conversing support uh, for the candidate. Um, you know, so, I mean, people are allowed to, to move around and, and uh, uh, have their fitness walks. People are allowed to, to have uh, processions. You know, I mean, I, I remember growing up uh, on the streets of, or in the city of Calabar, one of the, the popular processions was that of um, uh, BCCS, I think, or BCS, you know BCS, uh -huh. uh, Brotherhood of Cross and Star. <laughs> yeah, you remember? Mm. Why do I remember? That's, 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 that's an example of a procession, mm -hmm. you know, or you have um, the Apostolic Church, they also have their own procession, you know, you know, so churches have processions. In Port Harcourt, you have um, groups that do their work, you know, for fitness, like a steady run and all that thing. So if these groups say they want, they want to do a, a fitness walk or a, a procession, I think they're allowed to do that as long as they're not, you know, breaking any law. Yeah, and look at the crowd there. I don't think they would have, you know, obstructed traffic to a, a very bad extent. Um, so we're waiting to hear what the police will say. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm happy to see that they stood their ground, you know, and um, that the fitness walks around the country are going on. What we don't want to see would be um, maybe two rival groups clashing. I hope they are aware that campaigns haven't started yet, you know, because we've seen billboards everywhere. But I think Anik is a bit, you know, loose on these things. They don't want to be too hard. You know? mm. So all in the name of democracy, may the best man win. No, but, but, but however, I mean, I totally understand that uh, a lot of persons need to know that campaigns have been shadowed and slated to start on the 28th of September, you know, 2022, and that's what it is. But, you know, what you will always say that the, there's a lacuna, there's just a hole, because you look at it, you ask yourself, uh, everyone is saying it's a rally, it's not a support. And you, you don't really have this candidate, those who are vying for these offices, making that presence and showing up to say, hey, um, this is it. I'm asking that you vote for me, making those statement the way it should be. And that's where it is. But I, I, it, like we would always say that our democracy is nascent, it <laughs> were in progress, and we would always you know, get to a point where we look at all of these loopholes and make some amends, and, and that's what it is. But you know, you know interestingly, uh, David Mai had had some kind words to say about the uh, so-called obedient movement, or B movement. You know, Governor Bebo, he said, who people are pointing, accusing fingers are, you know. Uh, he, he said that uh, though Peter B's movement is one built on equity, justice, and fairness, this was his words, quote, it may not translate to an outright win. You know, what he was saying that, uh, you know, he has, what he said made him look like he had a soft spot for Peter B. You know, as an Igbo man, uh, he said he wouldn't mind if he be won the presidential election. So uh, it remains to be seen if Umahi ordered this. You know, in times like this, the governors will say they don't control the police. I mean, that's why, I mean, that's, let's, let's the, that's the point. <laughs> you know, that's the point now, because if you also yeah. look at it, a lot of persons yeah. are asking why President Mohammed Buhari would, should be sued. You know, because the question is that the president is going to be sued or has been sued for X, Y, Z. And everyone's saying this happened, you know, in a boring state. Could it be that? Why are you suing the president? But we understand the issue of who controls the police architecture in different states. Uh, the command, we're talking about the command now. Are, are these uh, police officers, do, do you have the commissioners of police in different states answering to the governors? Do they really answer to the governors? Do they take orders from the governors? Even though it's not on, I mean, in the books, it's quite different what the law states and what we're actually faced in reality. So will the order be coming from above and who would be giving this order? You know, these are some of the questions that are begging for answers. And uh, like, you know, my colleague Kofi had mentioned earlier, we hope that the police will put out a statement because what we say that until you become a threat to your national security and peace of the entire, you know, space or community where you are at the time, uh, maybe that's when, you know, the police would actually act. But as long as this person's, everyone has a right to, you know, an association and gathering, as long as they're not constituting, uh, constituting a nuisance or a problem to anyone, posing security threat and what have you. 
uh, fingers across would definitely bring you all of the developments as we proceed. Well, the, the last uh, training story we have for you this morning, uh, of course, you all know that um, last week a big story right here in, in Lagos State was um, the, the auctioning of cars that had been impounded or confiscated by the government of Lagos State for flouting uh, uh, traffic rules, traffic regulations, if you want to call it, uh, call it that, all right? And, um, of course, some people came out saying, uh, the government is being too harsh. She saw some of the victims, those who owned cars that we were being auctioned, you know, crying and wailing and saying this was the only source of livelihood. You know, people who were, uh, you know, trying to just eke out a living. And uh, the the um, humanitarian side of Nigerians, the compassionate side of Nigerians, kicked in. You can see uh, family there. This one said that um, uh, the this is this was a vehicle they bought for uh, some million of uh, over a million naira. And it was being auctioned for less than the amount that they bought it with. And this was what they were using to survive. You know, but the government of Lagos State had come out to say, hey, these vehicles were impounded for violating traffic rules. Well, uh, the, the, the news that trended over the weekend got people reacting was the fact that um, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Lagos State, Abdulaziz Olajide Adediro, uh, popularly called Jando, and his running mate, Olufunka Kinele, she's an actress, publicly called Jennifer of Funka Kindele, uh, visited Mr. Latif uh, Kolakpo and Mr. Osina Chindukwe, two of the victims, you want to call it that, victims, <laughs> of the recently auctioned uh, 134 cars, uh, which were impounded, like we said, by the Lagos State government for tra traffic offenses. And, um, of course, um, Latif Kolakpo himself had claimed that uh, his vehicle was driven by his mechanic, when he was ill and hospitalized. So he didn't know anything about it. And the car was just, you know, impounded. It wasn't his fault, is what he said. It wasn't his fault. It's his mechanic's fault. Uh, Osina Chindukwe, on his part, said he was sentenced to three months in prison for driving against traffic, and the vehicle was impounded and auctioned off. So he said during his three-month jail term, he lost his three-year-old daughter uh, due to the non-availability of funds to cater for her health. And after serving the jail term, the bus was auctioned on his, and his means of survival is gone. So you can see the pictures of Jando and Funke listening to them. There's even a microphone there. Uh, Jando, however, commiserated with Osina Chief for his loss, but kicked against uh, reckless driving and violation of traffic laws. He also condemned the state government for the harsh punishment of taking offenders' means of livelihood. All right, so that's what they are saying. Give them some. But what is the what did the um, the All Progressives Congress in Lagos State uh, say? Well, they are their part in reaction to this condemned uh, Jando and uh, Funke Akinile for you know uh, going ahead to do this. What they've just we have talked about visiting those whose uh, vehicles were auctioned by Lagos State government. They are describing the visit of these two politicians. Uh, the governorship candidate of the people, PDP in Lagos State and his running mate as a, quote, appalling, is what the APC in Lagos State are saying. All right? Um, they said, quote, uh, the move of Jando amounts to turning compassion and charity on its head, is what the APC is saying. Quote, it was pathetic uh, that he simply interpreted the loss or interpreted the loss of his hosts to having the means of livelihood taken away from them, when in actual fact people have lost their lives to accidents as a result of driving against traffic, is what the APC uh, in Lagos State is saying. Interesting. Mm. Well, uh, I think that you know at this point in time, uh, it's a political season. I mean, it's a period of politicking, so you would have a lot of you know actions that. You know, on a natural and normal day, these things don't will ne never happen. I mean, okay, so let's even look at it. If these two persons, I mean, Jando and Funke Akindele, were not contesting for, you know, the office, number one office or sits in Lagos, do you think that they would have visited, you know, these uh, persons whose vehicles were auctioned? Uh, it's one question. Do you think they would have visited? They do have an interest, and so it's a period of politics, and anything can actually happen. Everyone takes advantage of any situation 
you know, just to score a point and just to make sense. But I think that where the bone of contention is, because, you know, according to that report, they assured the residents of the state that the violation of traffic laws will not be condoned if they emerge as governor of the state uh, in 2023. But any legislation that takes away the means of livelihood of the offenders will be reviewed. So uh, it is what, you know, politics is about. Everyone's looking for okay, so this policy is not favorable. We think that this policy is, is harsh, is brash, and so uh, we're saying that this is what we're offering you when we're coming. If you offend, I mean, if you're a traffic offender, you will face the law consequently. I mean, or you'll face the law as it is, but the mean, your means of livelihood will not be taken away. And that's what they are offering. It's a season. So um, let's see how all of that pans out, really, like I'd say. Politics well, is about interest. Well, well you, you, you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not, you're not, wrong. You say this is political. I mean, and uh, it's a good question you've asked, Mercy. Um, why did they go visit? Would they have visited if they're not, you know, uh, running? But you know, I mean, I don't blame politicians for being politicians. If you're running, this is what you do. If you are a pastor, you go preach, you pray. You know, it's like when people say, well, "Why aren't pastors building hospitals and schools, and they are building churches?" But I'm like, pastors are meant to pastor. You know, so where do they pass it? These are churches. You know, if they wanted to be governors who will build schools, they will do that. You can't blame them. So when people do what they're meant to do, you know, this is normal. Um, I'll do that. But the thing is this, yeah. You will? Yeah. You, when you, when you want, would you sit at home if you were running an election and you were on the ticket you wanted to win? You want to you go out and do, meet the people, talk to people, you know, present yourself, sell your ideas, show compassion, you know, plate people's hair. Uh, you know, eat corn on the road, you know what I'm saying, and pear. Uh -huh. it's, 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 it's normal. So, but what I'm saying, I, I, I agree with you, you know, that um, to an extent also, they, I mean, if you go out there and you're telling them, oh, we come, come to commiserate with you, but when we become government, we will not condone uh, breaking of traffic rules and traffic regulations. So what are you saying? They're saying they don't support the taking away of people's livelihoods. Fantastic. Um, you know, I don't want us to go back to the debate, but it, we can't help it. Um, when you say taking away people's livelihoods and then the punishment not being commiserate with the, with the action. I saw a video yesterday of a, of a truck that was overtaken in some part of the world and crashed. I think it killed 21 people. This is not one of those stories that people are making. For instance, one of the aides to the governor filmed himself. You know, he apprehended someone or caught somebody driving against traffic on Third Milan Bridge and forced him to reverse. People were not believing him because he said, they said, you're an aide to the governor. You understand? You're a media aide to the governor of Lagos State. So I wish sure this is not arranged. Oh, yeah, arrest the people, let's see. You know, and they were not arrested. Another one we saw, you know, on, on, on the internet again, they said, um, a certain man, Lagos man in pounds or blocks last man vehicle from driving one way. And then people are saying, why are all these things coming up now? You understand why all these things coming up now? They feel it's it's made up, it's arranged, all right. But the one I saw yesterday, I think it's in the UK, where 21 people died because a tipper truck overtook without actually looking to see it was an oncoming vehicle and just rammed. It was speeding, rammed into the cars that were coming, and those who lost their lives. So, um, these traffic regulations are set up to protect lives because people have lost life, people have lost their limbs, you know lost their source of livelihoods because one person wants to make a living. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, these things need to be looked into. We have legal state traffic or transport sector law, 2018, that has a list of violations and penalties. And I think that Lagosians need to go study these things. So if you don't, so, want, so if you don't want your livelihood to be taken away from you, then do not do the crime. If you do not want your livelihood to be taken away from you, do not do the crime. Because some people in the process of... Uh, fulfilling their livelihoods have taken other people's lives, all right? Other well, people's uh, lives. When, when you go to maybe Singapore, for instance, or China, for instance, and they say, oh, if you catch you with drugs, even if it's just a gram or a milligram, you will be given the death penalty. You'll be, I think you'll we be need executed. To go now. Sorry, Messi. You'll be executed if you're given, you're caught with just a milligram of, of, uh, of drugs. Would you say, oh, it's, it's not commiserate with the crime? They don't want that thing in their society. And they have laws, they have rules and regulations so that you will not even think of doing it. So these are the issues. But we have to go. Um, we'll take a short break now. And when we come back, we dive straight into what the papers are saying this morning. Please stay with us.